Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for May 5th, 2021. Well, goodness gracious sakes alive. Yesterday, we had another nasty little whipsaw. Um, started out the day kind of negative, and then Janet Yellen chimed in, suggesting that um, we were going to probably have to raise rates soon to prevent the market from overheating. She went on to then clarify, oh, but wait, I'm not predicting that. Um, well, thank you very much, Miss Yellen, because you certainly created a big nasty whipsaw yesterday in the market. Now, technically we created some damage in um, a couple of the index charts, um, but some performed really, really well and what does that mean for today? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink? Let's buckle up and get ready for the hump day edition of the morning market prep video. Well, good morning once again, everyone. We had that nasty little whipsaw yesterday, and if you guys are getting tired of these, um, you're not alone. This has been a, a very challenging period in the market with a lot of whipsaws. I've been working with a lot of individuals um, um, in their, as a, their trading coach, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of folks that are feeling the pain of these um, very wide ranging whipping moves in the market. We've gotta be really careful not to over trade a market like that. And that is going to lead me directly into the warning today. We had a great bullish bounce yesterday in the Dow and they're trying to push that higher this morning. But let's keep in mind, let's remember just how painful these pop and drops have been that we have seen lately. Let's not continue to fall for this and chase in first thing in the morning thinking that, well, this time has to be different because nothing has changed yet in this chart. But let's take a look at the technicals. Once again, if we draw our trend line out here, let's just notice that we've been in this wide ranging consolidation for some period of time. We had a nice bullish bounce yesterday after an ugly, ugly pullback, but we held this price support here in the Dow. Now we're trying to push that through. So this push through yesterday could actually produce a new record high today in the Dow, assuming we can follow through. Now remember, we have another huge day of earnings with more than 200 companies reporting, and we're going to get private payroll data today. So. Um, once again, anything is possible. So be careful chasing this first thing in the morning. One of the things that it seems institutions have really been trying to do is inspire that chase. We, um, we, we um, put in a big bullish move and we um, try to chase in the next morning and then they suck the market back down, uh, ripping that account or money out of, out of accounts. And then the next day we go lower and everybody tries to get short and pick up short positions and then we reverse it the next day. And that's kind of what we have seen for the last couple of weeks here in the market. So don't fall for it again. Don't chase in first thing this morning. Let's wait and see if we can actually get follow through buyers that can push this index out before we start making some of those trade decisions. Keep in mind that we certainly have the possibility that we could continue in this consolidating zone for another couple of weeks just to slide over to that trend. So we may not be done here with this whippy price action in the market. Let's take a look at the SPY. Now the SPY had a pretty rough day yesterday, but I gotta tell you, I, in a way, I truly appreciate it because the folks of Right Way Options, we had put on a bear call credit spread in the SPY. We were able to close because of that big um, whipsaw move, choppy move, we were able to close that bear call credit spread for better than a 25% gain um, on the day. And I'll show you another one in the NASDAQ here in just a little bit. But what's good about the chart is we held in on this price support and rallied back up. 
Unfortunately, we did not do as good a job as the Dow and we left a resistance level in the chart that we still need to break through. Now remember, the problem that's creating all of this havoc and discontent in the market is that big techs are struggling. And because big techs encompass about 40% of the Dow, and we're talking seven companies that encompass about 40% of the S&P 500 weight. That puts a real serious situation here in the market where if we cannot get those big techs to move, it's gonna be difficult for the S&P 500 to break through. So watch those closely. Let's also keep in mind that we may still have a considerable amount of consolidating to do just to kind of slide over here to trend. Remember, the SPY does not have much price support underneath it here. If this would have failed yesterday, oh my goodness, that would have been ugly if we'd have failed through there because the next real price support in the chart is all the way down here. So holding that yesterday was a good thing, but now we're still in that chop potential range. So be careful not to chase this morning. Let's take a look at the Qs. Now the QQQ gave us a beautiful trade yesterday with a bear call credit spread that we had already put on and that produced um, a 48% return for us in right way options yesterday. And as you can see here in the chart, we created some technical damage here in the NASDAQ. Notice that we broke down we broke down, and this is even before the Yellen speech, we broke down below this price support, gapping below. Keep in mind, this is a double top high, and we were unable, at least at this point, to hold that price support in the chart. So that created some technical damage. And not only that, if this is the current trend, and I believe it to be true that that is the current trend, then we ended up, breaking below that trend yesterday. Now we're trying to rally back up this morning, but let's keep in mind as we rally, we're gonna be running into a ver fairly significant price resistance level in the, in the chart. And if those big techs continue to struggle, that may be a problem for us. What we don't wanna see is we don't wanna see us rally up into here and then fail. Now, I also want to point out just how closely we came yesterday to testing our 50-day moving average in the chart. And that 50-day moving average happens to be down here around a um, price support level in the chart. So we cannot rule out the possibility, and I honestly think it would be a uh, kind of shocking actually, um, when we get that close to the 50-day moving average, it would be rather unusual for us not to test it. So kind of keep that in mind. If we were to rally back, uh, we're gonna watch this area up in here for that potential of a failure. If that failure were to occur, I would not rule out that possibility that we do test that 50 day moving average here in the NASDAQ. And remember with the NASDAQ holding such a, a large, with the, with the big techs, holding such a large weight in not only the SPY, but also very heavily weighted in the Dow itself with Microsoft and Apple. If they struggle, it's gonna be really difficult for these charts to break through those resistance ranges that we've set here recently. So just kind of keep a close eye on that. Um, anything is possible here. And then let's take a look at IWM. Now IWM, um, although it suffered a lower high here this week, notice that we failed here at a lower high, we failed a resistance level. And if you look closely at this chart, and let's, let's bunch this up a little bit. Let's go to um, more of a, uh, a um, longer term. Notice that we have, you got to squint maybe just a little bit. There is this possibility of a head and shoulders type uh, pattern showing up in that chart. You can see it right in here where we have a shoulder that we built out over in this area. This is our head and we built out the shoulder over here. But it's not a clear defined head and shoulders pattern by any means. So it may be just something, um, uh, you know, just the chop zone creating um, that possible pattern. But let's 
do take note of the more important technical pattern that's created here just recently. And that is the fact that we failed at a lower high. We ran into this price resistance, we failed that lower high. And then we followed that failure through by breaking down through this price support. So both of those are bearish, but on the bullish side, we ended up, up holding on to this upside trend. So what we've got going on here is this symmetrical triangle that we continue to chop around in. Now keep in mind, um, symmetrical triangles can continue just ranging around as we complete that triangle. We could also, if the bears were to find some inspiration, we could break that lower, rally back to find that resistance, and then we see that failure occur. If the bulls can find some energy, then we could rally back up into the top side of this, break out, hold it as support, and then we have that bullish side. So this is kind of that 50-50 th um, uh, pattern here in the chart. We're just not sure. And we're going to just have to really stay on our toes and stay focused on price action. Don't just blindly um, run into the market. Um, there is some danger here still to be sorted out. Let's take a look at the VIX. Now that VIX, doggone it, um, yesterday we crept up and we broke above 20 handles in the market on the VIX with that fear spiking up. But by the end of the day with a big rally, we pushed that back down. So the good news is we ended up ultimately holding this area as resistance in the chart. And I think that's important. We don't want to see um, um, us break up through there and actually hold that as support because that's where real selling could begin. But let's also take note that we're having a little bit higher lows here coming off in that VIX. So not 100% comfortable here by any means. And if we take a look at the longer term downtrend, this pullback here yesterday gives us a little bit of warm and fuzzy that at least we held off that resistance level in the chart so again a little bit of a, um, a triangle uh, pattern winch pattern here being formed and we're just going to have to watch this closely and really stay on our toes there's no certainty here um, that i see in the vix now let's take a look at our t21 22 t21 22 also is giving us well, some uncertainty here in the chart. Let's notice that T2122 never tells us which way the market is going to go. It does indicate to us when we're overbought or oversold. And it's very, very good at doing that. It's phenomenally good at doing that. And if we take a look um, at T2122, what it's telling us is we're just kind of sitting on the fence. Um, we, we have pulled back and we were pulling back yesterday, even with a rally, we saw T2122 pulling back because the majority of stocks were still down or sideways. And um, what that tells us is we have opened up some opportunity for the bullish upside if we can find that inspiration. But it also tells us that we still have a significant downside possibility if the bears find the inspiration. So no particular direction here on T2122. 22, but there is that good news that we have opened up enough upside potential if we can uh, those bulls have room to move if we can find that inspiration here in the market on this all this data coming out let's take a look at our t2101 now unfortunately we didn't find a whole lot of inspiration yesterday although we bounced and rallied really really hard um, our absolute market breadth continues to languish. It continues to decline. It's not showing us um, um, good strength or momentum in the market. And we continue in this long-term downtrend on T2101. So just keep that in mind. It is, is kind of concerning that we're not seeing great follow through here. Um, and I think that's just because the breadth of the market just isn't there to uh, provide that good follow through momentum energy. At least it's not there yet, so watch that close. Then let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now our economic calendar 
we're going to start ramping up this week in some data that really could move the market around. And we're going to begin this morning here with the ADP report, the ADP private jobs um, report. Now, this is going to be significant. They're expecting huge numbers to come in on the ADP. Um, the um, uh, calendar consensus here is, is somewhere around 785,000 uh, jobs were created um, last month um, in the market. Now, a couple things can occur from this. Um, it depends on how the market views this. We could view this number as very, very positive, and if we come in right around that number, it could be very, very positive. We could also imagine if it misses and comes in short of that, that the market could see that bearishly. Now, we also have this problem with inflation starting to creep up. And if this number were to be bested, say, for example, we beat that number dramatically, it could raise the concerns that the market is overheating. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this. There's anything possible in this number this morning. Watch that closely, how that comes out. Definitely could be a market mover, so keep a close eye on that. Then later on today, we have ISM um, um, Services Index. Doubt that moves the market around much. And we have the Petroleum Status Report that will come in. And of course, that will be really important for those oil sector stocks that have started to show some bullishness. We'll look at that in just a little bit. Um, keep in mind, we have a parade of Fed speakers here today as well. Um, doubt we learn anything more, but always want to pay attention to that. Now, keep in mind, today, this triggers off three days of jobs data. We're going to get that ADP. We're going to get jobless claims tomorrow. And then we've got the big employment situation on Friday. It is not unusual for the market to become light and choppy as we wait for this number here from the federal government. So keep, um, keep that in mind that although we're showing bullishness this morning in the pre-market futures, it could be just another one of those, uh, you know, try to bait the market in and then it goes nowhere on the day. So watch that closely. Make sure you're seeing some follow through buying before you jump um, and we don't want to be fooled again um, as this market continues to grind sideways. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now, our earnings calendar, very busy day, well over 200 companies reporting. There's no way I can cover all of the notables in today's um, uh, market. So make sure, guys, that um, if you want to uh, catch all those notables, click that link just below the title of the video. That will take you back to the morning blog. And in the morning blog, I list out quite a few companies that I believe would be notable, notable for today. So a few of them I'm going to cover here really quick, and then we're going to move on. Um, we've got uh, General Motors reporting today. It looks like General Motors is getting a little bit of a boost this morning in this pre-market candle trying to pop off of that. So perhaps they reported well, even though they've got these chip problems. Watch that closely. This has been in a downtrend, but holding on to that support. So we need to break out of that and hold to kind of show that bullishness coming back into that chart. We're going to hear from stocks like Lumber Liquidators this morning, and they are getting hammered here this morning after reporting. Um, they've been in a long downtrend, and it looks like that is not going to end this morning, um, looking pretty ugly here at the moment. We're going to be getting um, um, reports from like Barry Gold. Barry Gold right now at this point showing in a bullish chart pattern trying to hang in here and no particular move on that one at least at the moment we're going to get twlo twillo will be reporting today keep a close eye right now whoops got to get the right symbol um not showing too much here this morning, maybe a little tiny rally, and that may be just a function of following through on yesterday's bounce. So watch that when that reports. We will also hear from uh, Tupperware. Tup will be reporting today. It looks like they're bouncing up here this morning. They've been in an ugly downtrend, but they're trying to get some energy here this morning. So there's a few stocks. Um, Uber is also in that list. You might want to keep an eye on that. We've got Weight Watchers, and we will also hear from Zynga uh, today. So 
quite a few companies um, out there reporting. Make sure you um, are focused in on those, particularly if you happen to be holding those companies. Now let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, please do me a favor, click that subscribe button on YouTube, and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And then also, guys, if you could do me a favor, if you felt like the video was worthy, please smash that like button, leave a brief comment. That helps me out a ton. I truly appreciate it. And um, also just that shout out to the folks that are support supporting the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee um, link that's just below the title of the video. I truly want to say thank you so much for that. You guys are awesome. I you humble me every day and I and I mean that I mean that you guys um, thank you so much for supporting the content of this channel I truly truly appreciate it so let's take a look at a few stocks setting up now I got to tell you there's a lot of damage created in some charts um, but there are some good sectors out there looking strong take a look at um, uh, sectors like XLY, consumer discretionaries. Although we pulled back yesterday, we bounced nicely and we didn't really break anything down too much. So take a look at some of those stocks that are in that consumer discretionary sector. We're going to see stocks like UAA that's receiving an upgrade today. We've got um, General Motors in that list. We've got some of the casinos in that list. Um, Etsy, uh, obviously, that is an ugly looking chart, and I wouldn't want to be uh, trying to trade that at the moment. But look through this, um, this list. There's a lot of good companies in here that could be potential trades. Another great um, area is XLI, the industrial sector. This has held up incredibly well. Very, very strong in the industrials. And if you come through, these are just all companies that um, we know, J.B. Hunt, um, um, just SWK, um, INFO, UNP, um, lots of lots of strong companies that make up this index and they are all showing lots of bullishness. So take a look at some of those companies looking strong. Now I got to tell you, um, I think we want to be keeping some pretty close eyes on some of these steel sector stocks. Yesterday, um, US Steel caught an upgrade and sh shot up nicely here. Notice that this is breaking out here and we've been following a trend. Now this is not a trade that I would suggest you wanna chase, but any rest or pullback in here sets up an opportunity. And one of the reasons these are getting so much attention right now is because the idea of infrastructure um, spending going on. Keep an eye on X, you might also um, want to keep an eye on stocks like STLD. Very, very strong. Don't chase it right now. Wait for the next entry. You can see where I've had this trade alerted, but don't chase it right now. Let it rest or pull back for that next opportunity in the trade. Steel doing very well. I, I do have to um, make mention of some of the retailers out there. Retail has been holding up, big retail has been holding up um, nicely. Take a look at Target. This is a beautiful chart. Um, great setup, all time highs. Keep an eye on Target. You're going to want to keep an eye on Costco. Costco, although it had a little bit of a pullback yesterday because of the whipsaw, notice that we are holding in here on a price support. If we can find that bullishness in here, I would see no reason why we couldn't move right on up here, challenge these highs in the chart and possibly even break on through. So there's a few stocks for you to pay attention to. McDonald's would also be in that list. They've been doing quite well holding up. And you'll, you'll see like stocks like uh, GPS looking very, very good. Um, that UAA, by the way, I hold UAA, so I have a bias in that. But just watch that. Some pretty, pretty darn good stocks overall. Um, and last but not least, take a look at like XLP. XLP, um, the consumer um, staples sector, really looking good, pushing back up. And if you take a look at this at a longer term chart, that is a beautiful weekly chart. After breaking through that resistance, all time highs holding in here, 
watch that one closely if those staples continue to move and and just keep in mind we're talking about tyson estee lauder cook kellogg's procter and gamble monster beverages coca-cola pepsi clorox all of the companies that we know in here and a lot of them are performing quite well so watch for those charts good divvy pairs as well if you want a longer term hold so with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day I apologize this video was just a little bit longer a little bit more in the technical arena that we needed to cover this morning i hope you all appreciate um, the um, the effort that goes into putting these out every day and i thank everyone who does take the time to leave those comments and share these videos on your other social media feeds thank you so much have a great day and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Wish you all the best, everyone.